So for all the separation techniques that we've already talked about, uh, this keeps the protein in a folded state, all of these uh, different ways. But we can also, uh, we can also use denaturing methods, uh, which will uh, allow for separation of proteins by mass. So for instance, we have two proteins, a smaller one uh, shown in blue and a larger one in red. Uh, we can use denaturing conditions. So we can use a molecule called sodium dodecyl sulfate, which just like, uh, like a phospholipid, for instance, has a polar head group and a hydrophobic tail. And so uh, this is for short known as SDS. And we can denature the proteins in this way because, uh, again, on the outside, we have this, uh, the soluble proteins, uh, water-soluble proteins, tend to have uh, very hydrophilic groups uh, on the outside of the protein on the surface uh, and then hydrophobic cores in the middle. So when you add sodium dodecyl sulfate, what that causes is that actually causes these proteins to denature and almost want to flip. Uh, and so by denaturing the proteins, what we get are chains. So a smaller protein with a shorter amino acid sequence might have a, a, an amino acid, uh, unfolded uh, amino acids um, chain about we'll say this long, and then <clears throat> for a larger protein, it's going to be much longer, right? Okay? So we have these strings of amino acid residues. Now, we can use a technique called polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis in order to separate these. So what happens is when the sodium dodecyl sulfate interacts and unfolds this, it also binds itself. So if this is SDS, it binds to the backbone of the amino acid, or excuse me, of the amino acid chain. And so SDS also has a charge. So the sulfate indicates it has a negative charge on it. Okay, and it binds pretty uniformly along uh, the amino acid chain, which means that we can separate this by mass to charge ratio, but because the charge is uniformly distributed along the amino acid chain, what we're essentially uh, separating is, is just by mass. So we can put this into uh, what's called a polyacrylamide gel, which uh, creates a mesh of polymers. Uh, and so the proteins now, so these, uh, these amino acid chains now have to travel through these meshes. So smaller amino acid chains uh, will travel through uh, the uh, acrylamide gel much faster than longer chains. And since these, SDS, uh, since these SDS molecules that are bound to the backbone are also negatively charged, the way we can pull this through or force these, uh, these chains through the polyacrylamide gel is by, uh, draw, uh, by applying a current. So since these will be now negatively charged, the, uh, these amino acid chains will start to migrate towards the positive anode and pull themselves through the, uh, and this current will pull these chains through the polyacrylamide gel. And then again, because uh, this will migrate faster, we have proteins that uh, after a set amount of time, such as uh, an hour to two hours, uh, smaller proteins, such as these proteins that are six and a half kilodaltons, will migrate through the gel much faster than proteins, say, at 200 kilodaltons, which can barely get through this mesh uh, uh, during that time.